What is going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes checking in again with you all. Of course, we always bring you the best fighters in the world on this show. And this guy, John McDessie, has literally been on our show multiple, I mean multiple times, because the guy's been doing it for a long time at the highest level, at least a dozen years. Welcome back, John. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. So let's let's see if we can we're missing half of your head there. Uh well, you able to there, there you go. go. All right. I was just about to pay you a compliment too, even before that. You look <laughs> you I mean, probably because you in great shape, cutting weight and everything, but uh you honestly don't look 38, you look 28. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting we're getting older. That's that's one thing we cannot control our age. Yeah. You are already are getting skinny. older. You aren't yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, trust me, I'm getting old, man. Uh <clears throat> I feel it. It's um with all these injuries I've been it's crazy. I, my body is, doesn't react to the same intensity as it used to. Mm. Have you had to curb your training in any way like maybe less wrestling or less car- cardio or have you cut yeah. anything out that just either you don't use or you you risk injury? Yes, definitely. Uh, throughout <clears throat> since COVID, but particularly in, since COVID, because that's when I started to suffer injuries for some weird reason. Um, I had to kind of really reassess everything. Okay. Now, are you able to share what you had to cut out, or does that maybe tip your yeah, opponent of off in any way? Oh, no, I don't care. It doesn't, no, it doesn't bother me. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, my life has been very interesting with, when it comes to, uh, you know, I, I dedicated my whole life to martial arts, <clears throat> obviously, you know, training, a lot of highs and lows. Um, body-wise, you know, I suffered ACL, hamstring, torn hamstring, ligaments, fractured bones, <clears throat> you know, you name it. Um, so I definitely cannot train the way I would want to, you know, like usually I would like to train tense three, four times a day. And I am, I am a workaholic. I come from a background. My parents are Lebanese. We're, you know, always working. So uh, I, I am a workaholic. So it was hard for me to kind of focus on recovery, rest and minimize. <clears throat> Instead of training three, four times, I would probably train, you know, like everything was calculated time-wise. I would make sure I don't exceed 35, 45 minutes of high intensity. Yeah. Um, also training partners. I also had to take charge of, uh, of like, you know, if I'm training at a gym, I had to tell the coaches to go, listen, Hey, I can't be, please don't pull me with a guy. Cause you know, I'm older. Uh, you know, a lot of guys in the gym, they look at me like, Oh, he's a fight UFC fighter. And let me prove myself. I, I, I get a lot of stupid injuries in the gym because some guy has to prove himself. Yeah. So I, 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 and I'm a, I'm a very respectful guy. Like I don't, I shut up. I listen to the protocol of the gym. You know, sparrings are hard, trainings are hard. Sometimes you're drilling, you're just drilling, and a guy gets nervous, and you can get injured. Injuries are very weird. So I had seven of them, with seven surgeries. So, but <clears throat> other than that, um, I'm very lucky. I've been very good. I've been very blessed for this training camp. So, you know, I, I always train hard, but. Um, more intelligent update us on where you're at now i mean the time we've talked to you you've been at tristar rufus and i think mma lab if i'm not mistaken are you still with any of them are you doing your own thing are you at a new gym where, where are you at now yeah man, it's funny this politics um i've been in well montreal i come from tristar and then i just wanted to leave montreal canada I wanted to travel explore i went to the lab tried it there ben henderson great guy and then uh, right now i'm with fight ready actually i've been preparing a fight ready we just okay. it, it just made sense it, we clicked uh, i like uh, i like their energy it was it was recipro- reciprocated um and yeah i just stayed there who travels with you or sorry you're already in sydney who traveled with you or who will be traveling with you to be part of your corner now yeah so eddie shy is the, the striking coach. I worked with him diligently and also one of my training partners and a fighter, Bobby uh, Moffitt. Okay. And then I also have some guys over here who, who have been helping me out. I went a little bit earlier just to adjust to the time. And I'm Good up, idea. And it's pretty cool because we're kind of, we're in the future right now. We're ahead of you. 
Yeah, that's true. You definitely hey, are in the future. Tell me who won the Dodger game so I can put in a bet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> John, so what, what you just did is a veteran move. You know, like we've seen so many fighters come on our show and just go, man, I should have got there earlier. Or if it has to do with uh, elevation, I should have got there, you know, gotten acclimated. Um, but can you maybe share a story in your career or in your life where now that you're making, you know, you make a smart move like that, probably due to experience and teammates and stuff. But was there ever a time where maybe you made one of those like rookie mistakes or something and you you ended up paying for it? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, fighting is so unpredictable. Uh, you know, when it comes to traveling, so many things can go wrong. You know, loss of suitcase, you can't find the right foods, your body doesn't get... Um, all the adjust like adjusting you know with the jet lag you know there's so many things that can go wrong i, I don't want to bore you you know i'm not going to get all specific but definitely being experienced uh, with the travels with in the past i i, I didn't want to take a chance and i wanted to come here a little bit earlier just to adjust and get get familiar with the air and get familiar with the time zones and i've been forcing myself to sleep at a certain time and wake up at a certain time. Mm, gotcha. And so for this particular fight, it's going to be interesting, man, because, you know, it's Australia. They're going to be rooting for their guy. But some fighters like to talk about how they feed off of that. They like that energy. How are you when it comes to that? Do you think you can feed off of that crowd? Well, I went to a, a complete new gym. All the guys want to kill me in that gym. Um, <laughs> every time I would go into sparring, they would make me wait. I would have to wait. <clears throat> so the, what we did in the gym was I had to wait last to go and um, to 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 do my my training session. And they, and everybody in the gym would boo me. The whole training camp I was getting booed. I mean, whatever. It is what it is. I, it's, that's, I cannot control the booing and all that stuff. I mean, I'm <clears throat> that is not gonna affect me at all. Um, I'm mentally, I'm mentally tough. I'm physically ready. I'm not the biggest guy. I'm not the tallest guy. I'm not the strongest guy, <clears throat> but I am the bull. So, you always, um, when we interview you, we always refer to you as a martial artist because you've always shown your love for martial arts. Is there ever any type of like uh, finish to a fight or a move or something that you've just kind of always wanted to do but haven't done yet in your career that you think maybe one day it might happen? Yeah, I mean, of course, every, uh, I think all fighters want to finish in a spectacular fashion. Um, in my career, uh, probably one of my favorite kicks is throwing a nice back kick to the floating rib, which I never finished a guy, but uh, I would say a, a nice back kick to the rib cage. Tell like the Mortal truth Kombat. here, John. <laughs> Tell the truth here. Do you want to br break the guy's rib or do you just want to knock the wind out of him and then he the referee stops it? Tell the truth here. Yeah, I mean, both works. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. Both, both situations works because if I, if I kick him in a good place, <clears throat> yeah. regardless if, it's, if, it's, if, uh, if I get the wind out of him or if I break something, he's definitely going to go. He's going to definitely drop. Yeah. Um, when did you get there to Sydney? Uh, I've been here since a couple of days now. Okay. So the fight isn't still for another I've been, 10 days. Correct. I've, so I've been here. So I, I came like two weeks. I've been here for like a week now. Allow me to be nosy, but does the UFC cover you for like a week? Or if you tell them, will they cover you for these two weeks? The hotel? Uh, the UFC, or... the, no, the UFC was very accommodating. They, uh, I, I, I suggested, I asked them if I can go yeah. early in advance. And they told me, uh, and they gave me, uh, they told me the, how early I can get there. So it worked out fine. Cool. There you go. All right. Oftentimes we critique them when I think they yeah. deserve it. And, and I give them praise when I hear something like this. I think that's outstanding. You're a veteran. You've paid your dues. And I'm glad they listened to you and accommodated you because it's important. Like Go said, sometimes it's the most smallest details adjusting yes. to what i mean 16 hours of flight time probably 12 time zones i mean you said it's one so maybe it's even more time zones than that 
You know what I mean? Food, water, uh, air quality. Who knows? I don't know what's going on over there in Sydney. It's pretty beautiful, to tell you the truth. So you may have even improved your status in, in regards to, you know, the natural air. I don't know. But that's awesome. That's a great story to hear. I, I like that. Yeah, I was very, I was very happy they actually accommodated me. I was a little concerned, but it worked out yeah. fine. Australia's famous for predators, right? Snakes, crocodiles, spiders, octopus. I mean, there's, I don't know. I, it freaks me out. I still want to visit it one day, but honestly, I would always be looking over my shoulder. But I wanted to ask you a silly question. What would you do yeah. if you were sleeping tonight and you wake up in the middle of the night and there's a big spider on your chest? A, yeah. do you politely remove it and put it in the hallway, maybe put a towel underneath your door so it doesn't come back in? B, do you swat it away and then start stomping on it, maybe drop a people's elbow on it? Or C, do you even go so far as to call downstairs and go, get me out of here, give me another room and another floor? A, B, or C? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I would be, I would freeze, number one. I would be, uh, I'd be pretty scared and I would be, I, I, would, I hope to God that spider did not bite me and I would just try to, Get it, get it out of my get it out of my chest and then after uh, after that uh, that's a good question i don't know I, I would it would be crazy if that would ever happen i hate spiders uh-huh well you got to give us an answer though we're in this far what do you think you do <laughs> well i just gave you an answer i, I would freeze i would i wouldn't react to it make sure it get, get it out of Oh, I, I would be so scared. I would just be like getting get it out of my on my body. And no, I know, I would, but would you would you kind of go like this, like oh come on, little boy, you know, like that, and put him down softly, or would you be like ah? It it, it would have been probably a fast reflex. So I was just got it. Just wiped it out as quick as fast as I can. I like it. All right, all right. A, a quick, uh, a quick remove fast. You know what I mean? Like a uh, scare. I know you're older, but you've probably learned a lot. You have a lot of knowledge. So are the weight cuts easier? Tougher or the same? Yeah, weight cutting, regardless of how many times you go through the process, it's always harder, difficult because um, <clears throat> the longer you train, you know, you, you improve the workouts, get improved, you know, your nutrition gets improved, you build more lean muscle. So uh, it's, uh, you know, you, you're more like it's you're more muscly, my muscles are more defined. So it's actually it never gets easier but of course it's just the science part of it like you i just know what my body can <clears throat> what my body can consume and what, what i what i need to get what i have to do to get it to, you know to get to the weight if that makes sense so to a certain degree it does get easier because of a more i have a lot of more knowledge and i have a lot of more i track everything down through all my years of of you know weight cutting yeah. but it, the weight cut itself is, of course, it's you know like right now, I'm, I'm a little bit. I just finished the workout. I I had a you know I had a session. I am cutting weight, so my energy level is a little bit depleted. You know what I mean? My, I'm a little bit uh, low energy. They say it takes a day. What is it? Every day you go just by an hour. Something silly like that. It's probably for common people like goes and I. A world class athlete like you, have you already shaken it off? Are you already kind of like? you know, uh, on the same timeline as everyone else in Sydney? Or are you still kind of, you know, we're odd sleeping hours? Oh, the jet lag. Jet lag, yeah. Yes, I'm fine, actually. I'm, surprisingly, I thought it would be a lot worse because I've never been in this area. i never been to this part of the world, so I was concerned how my body would react. But surprisingly, uh, I feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. Malarkey, um, how long... Did you watch, maybe you're very familiar with them, or maybe you had to watch highlights of them or whatever. But how long was it that you watched before you said, there's the game plan. I see where I can beat him. Like, you know, was it immediate or did you have to study this guy almost like you're preparing for a chess match, I guess? Yeah. Uh, when when they announced that fight, obviously, uh, I was watching tape. I actually was, <clears throat> what, what, got, what caught my eye even more was, his trainer and his mentor, Ross Pearson. I fought Ross Pearson. So oh. and then I watch his fights. He's a little bit of a boxing, you know, he does move a lot of his head. But uh, no, he, you know, he's a game, he's, he's durable. He's, he's a tough, strong, durable fighter. Um, I fought so many tough, durable fighters in the UFC. So, uh, but no, I mean, 
you know, it's easy for me to be like, oh, yeah, I saw a hole in him and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, anything can happen in a fight. I'm just, I, uh, I'm, you know, I prepared all across the board, you know, <clears throat> for, this situ for, the, for this fight. Um, so I'm just ready to go out there and, and give the fans an exciting fight. I want to give the fans an exciting fight. My last fight <clears throat> did not go the way I thought it was going to go. You know, some guys, it's strange. You know, some guys, they want to stay in the pocket and exchange it. Some guys are going to play that game, the point system game, where they'll just get a point, touch and go, touch and go, score a takedown. Like, it was very strange, you know what I mean? But this is a fight, you know what I mean? Like, I think uh, the fight, I think the fans deserve more than just uh, go in there and try to play the point system. You know, this is a combat full contact sport yeah so last question john you fought at ufc 124 you think you'll make it to ufc 324 <laughs> oh, i never thought about that I, for me every fight it's crazy my whole fighting career every fight is like my last fight it's like for me it's like do or die but i mean i don't really uh, that doesn't concern me mm-hmm well, we're on UFC 293, so it'd probably be about another two or three years if you still got it in you. I don't know. Are you 38? Do you do you feel like uh, you can still do this for a few more years? Is that is that the plan? That's a good question. Um, I always, in my heart, I always wanted to like. I don't want. I don't want the sport to retire me. I wanted to kind of, got it. You know, leave, leave in my terms. So, uh, so that's for me. It's all about. You know, I mean, I can. You know, it's easy to say I feel good or I look good, but it's all about how, uh, you know, under the lights, how I perform under the lights. That's what matters. Yeah. You know, uh, the way Zombie retired was incredible. Like, he got a big round of applause in Singapore. And, uh, I, know, I don't know if you it. saw it. Yeah, that was crazy. That's crazy. That was amazing, man. You know, oftentimes when you're on a pay-per-view and they go to the next fight, you barely have enough time to leave your gloves. And, hey, thanks for the memories. Bye. You know, but because he happened to be the last guy, the event was over. They really gave him a proper send off. But anyway, hey, look, as long as you're around fighting, we'd love to keep covering you. So thanks as always for your time. Good Appreciate luck with that. the rest of your camp and weight cut. And on September 9th for us, 10th for you. I hope you have a great fight against Jamie Malarkey. Thank you, man. I just want to give quick my my new merch came out with millions.co. They've been great helping me out with uh, some side stuff. So I wanted to give the a millions dot co a shout out and go support my new merch. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And by the way, have you ever ran yeah. with the Bulls in Spain? Did you ever do that? <laughs> no. You should no, do that. That's probably one of the best places, man, to maybe you know push that and just I I don't know. I would think the Bull would want to run with the Bulls either that or maybe go to Wyoming to some rodeo and take your chances there. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Take care, man. Thank we'll you. Talk guys. soon. All right, later.